In the previous video, we learned about the usage of getStaticParts function. In this video, let's inspect the build output as well as the network tab when we run the application. Let's start with the build command. In the terminal, run the command yarn build. This takes a couple of seconds to generate the build folder. Now for the first part, let's make sense of the build output in the terminal. Like before, we have a list of all the individual pages generated. We have the root page and the 404 page. Then we have the posts page, which is statically generated. And we know that because of the filled circle indicating SSG. So automatic generation of HTML plus data as JSON using get static props. Right after slash posts, we have slash posts slash post ID. This again is statically generated as you can see the filled circle. But for this route, Next.js uses the post ID returned from get static paths to generate the individual pages. Through the use of get static paths, we inform Next.js that the post ID can be one, two, or three, and Next.js uses that information to generate slash post slash one, slash two, and slash three. We also have the slash users route from before. If we inspect the dot next folder, we can see all the generated files. Within server, Within pages, we have posts.html and posts.json. We also have a posts folder itself. Within this folder, we see 1.html, 2.html, 3.html and their corresponding JSON files. In case you missed it last time, let me repeat when the HTML and JSON come into play. If you navigate directly to slash posts slash one, the HTML file is served to the browser. However, if you navigate to slash posts slash one from another page using the link tag, for example, the JSON is used to preload the data into the required page. If you're still confused, let's run the app and inspect the network tab to get a more clear picture. In the terminal, run the command yarn start. Let's track the network tab first by directly navigating into the first post. So open DevTools, go to the network tab, navigate to localhost 3000 slash post slash one, and then I'm going to empty cache and hard reload. If we now take a look at the network tab, we have this document one that is loaded from the server. The content type is text slash HTML and the preview is available. So one.html is the page that is served when we navigate directly to slash post slash one. This HTML file we see here in the server pages folder. Now let's navigate to this same page, but from the post list page. So navigate to localhost port 3000 slash posts, and then empty cache and reload. This time the document fetched is posts.html. But if you observe closely, we also have 1.json, 2.json and 3.json fetched from the server. Next.js sees that there are three links in the posts page which need additional data. So it will fetch the necessary JSON ahead of time. If you now navigate to slash post slash one, no additional data is required. You can see there is no activity in the network tab. 1.json from before is used to build this page you're seeing in the browser. 
This helps Next.js provide that performance improvement in page load time. If you view page source, the content is still present along with the JSON data that is needed as props for the page component. And remember, the link component prefetching doesn't just apply to pages with get static paths. If I navigate to the home page, empty cache and hard reload, both users.json and posts.json are prefetched. This is because a user can navigate from this page to either the users page or the posts page. And if we do navigate to slash posts, the JSON files for post ID one, two, and three are prefetched. Hopefully after inspecting the build folder and understanding the network tab behavior with respect to navigation, get static props and get static paths are making much more sense to you now. Thank you all for watching. Please do leave a like if you're enjoying the videos and make sure to subscribe to the channel.